Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day and today we're going to be ranking my 10 newest eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I'm pretty excited about this one, it's kind of hard to differentiate which ones were better than others because a lot of these are really good. There's like a couple that are like meh. But anyways, that's what we're doing today. Without any further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, before we get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to my shop, theopiancrypt.com. It is spooky season. I have a spooky all year business and I make it all myself by hand. It's my own little thing and hopefully you guys will enjoy my products. So let's get started. We're going to go the worst to best, even though worst sounds rude, you know. None of these are absolute trash, which is good, you know. You don't want things to be trash. But sometimes it's easier when things are just like lesser quality to like layer them and rate them you know but anyways let's start with number 10 so at the number 10 spot we have this palette from essence i actually quite like it um i just like like the number 10 and number 9 were kind of close for me just because the other one i don't like the color scheme as much but the quality slightly better but for like five bucks this palette is this is the taupe it up from essence it is absolutely super super cute I think it's precious. It's more of a grayscale one. I also have the green one. I haven't had the chance to use the green one from this collection yet of the bunch of mini ones. These are available at Ulta. I just thought this was super cute. I did put it lower on the list though because there's no real deep dark shade to help me like deepen up my outer corner of my eye looks which I really feel like it needs. Like this is a shimmer and it's the darkest shade in the palette. I feel like maybe if we didn't have this shade right here and we just turn this into a darker matte it would just change the whole palette completely um and the quality's okay like i don't think that's the most pigmented palette in the world especially for like these lighter mattes here but it definitely does like what you need it to do and for an easy like gray cool turn eye look day it works so this is the number 10 spot going in number nine these are not in the right order in the pans because when i was taking my thumbnail picture for today's video i dropped it and broke one of the shades so i just stuck them back in the pan wherever i'll figure out where they actually go later but this is the orchid you or not orchid you not palette from color pop i did do a get ready with me testing out this palette for the first time and so i did have done a look with it on camera already but this is the palette i got shattered <laughs> shadow all over my hands but the palette looks like this it's it's cute um, but I'm not really the purple person and I also feel like it could have been a little bit easier to blend this. So coming in at number 9 but it comes in above the Essence palette because you get a couple more shades and I quite enjoy this packaging. And the fact that these shades are magnetic so all I had to do when they fell out were just like drop them back in. Which is nice, you know, pretty nice. Number 8, this palette is cute. I just wish the packaging wasn't this cartoony style. I wish it was more realistic. Um, just my personal preference for these things. But I also did do a review of this too. So kind of all my reviews lately. This is the Disney uh, Cocos Pocus Witching Hour palette from ColourPop. Now I did review last year's last year as well. To me, last year's color scheme and packaging was just nicer. I think it made a little more sense. This one's just a little bit too cartoony and the color scheme's a little bit off. So that's why it's coming in a little bit lower on the list. Um, but I think it's cute. I just wish there was more greens. I don't really understand why like even this shade that looks kind of green on camera is definitely blue. And it just kind of leaves this shade hanging. And then everything else just seems random. Like you just made purples in here because the palette packaging was purple. Like for me it doesn't really scream amazing. I don't know. It could have been better thought out. And I really don't like how these are getting more cartoony and more cartoony every year. It's like the Hocus Pocus things are getting more cartoonized, but it's not an animated movie. So I don't know what that's about. Coming in at number seven, I do have a review of this as well. I did a sponsored video with Sigma, which is so cool to say, to be honest, it's so cool to say. And I tested out their new holiday collection. So this is the Magnifique eyeshadow palette, which is cute and tiny and compact. It's a little bit soon for holiday collections, but I also really enjoy the fact that you can buy ahead. And these aren't in stores, clogging up the Halloween aisles with Christmas stuff. So that works. I just think this packlet packaging with the lace detail and the word Magnifique on it is super cute. It's super travel friendly and a great gifting idea since it is a holiday palette. It's rated lower on the list because it's more of a purple palette and there's not that many like varieties of shades. But I quite like the quality of them. And then the shimmers in this palette are super pretty too. Like I just love Sigma's eyeshadow quality the last like two years especially. So I thought the quality of this is really good. It's just not my forte of like weird hard to store palettes. And like the purple color selection isn't my usual vibe. Even though I have purple hair, purple eyeshadow wasn't my thing. But I still think it performed great. Coming in at the number, I think this is five spot now. We have the Play It Jewel palette from ColourPop. 
I was torn on this one. Seeing it online, I was like, it doesn't pull very jewel toned. So when it came in the mail, I was like looking at it, trying to be a little critical of it because I'm like, is it worth it? If you call it a jewel palette and it doesn't look like jewel tones, like jewel tones in real life, and it doesn't, but the kaleidoscope packaging like blew me away. I just love how this looks on the outside. And then the inside, it definitely is not jewel tones. I thought maybe just because online pictures are weird, it would give me more of those gemstone kind of vibes that I wanted in person. It didn't, but I do like it. I've used it a bunch. Um, if you check my description box, I always list what makeup I'm wearing on my face. And I've worn this in a couple videos lately. I do quite enjoy it. I actually kind of like that this like pinky purpley tone in here is kind of like different and more cool compared to what it's everyone else puts in all their palettes um and i like the little pop of orange and the green here is nice but like again we have no green mattes to go with this green here and i've really just been using the neutrals so for me these are two very bright tones and not less gemstone jade colors like a peacock color like these are not the right shades to be a play at jewel palette but I was won over by this kaleidoscope packaging and I love their mega palettes. So it's great quality and I've used it a ton. That's why it's higher up on the list. But the theme isn't there for me. You know, like the theme doesn't match. Ugh. All right, number four. The top four were hard. Um, they're really pretty palettes. And this is the one that I'm using on my eyes today for like a subtle version because I feel like people look at this palette and they see colors, especially because of the front cover. But this is the Sonic Bloom palette from ColourPop. I didn't see this anywhere. I think it really launched on ColourPop's website before it launched on Ulta's. No, Ulta's website before it launched on ColourPop, sorry. Because this is the first place I saw it. And I just think it's super pretty and no one ever talked about this. Like this flew under the radar because it was right in between like that big jewel palette and that witching hour palette. I just feel like no one ever talked about this and I just thought it was so pretty. Now I wanted this because I saw like how much I really liked the Malibu palette from ColourPop and like how much that one intrigued me. And this gave me that same vibe. So here it is. It looks very colorful like because the packaging is very colorful. But when you look at it, it's really just a pop of pink and a pop of a silver and I really like that we have this dark shade in here it actually pulls kind of towards a berry tone of a dark color and today I'm using like these three this is on my lid and they use this for my darker outer corner so like you got a I got a nice bronzy look with this it gave me one of these green shades which I really like and a pop of gold so the color scheme for me is on point I mean will I use these two shades Probably not, but everything else in here I can see myself using on a frequent basis. And just like that Malibu palette, this flew under the radar and I just think it didn't get enough attention because it's really pretty, like really pretty. It's so easy to use because like ColourPop's quality, they like blend together on their own effortlessly. Number three. Oh my gosh, this is so cute and I didn't review it just because I got it kind of late and I figured everyone else already did, but I still think about like, that'd be a good review, but I, I feel like because I just work with this brand, I shouldn't review all their stuff because people would be like oh she got sponsored one time she's just trying to blah blah i don't care anyways the sigma princess palette the cinderella one now cinderella is a basic princess which no hate to her she's one of the originals the ogs um but i don't know i feel like cinderella wasn't the most exciting theme for me and then i saw the inside and i was like <sighs> the variety they chose is gorgeous so kind of a basic theme i feel like princes have been princesses have been done but it, it's so well executed and it's so pretty so the cinderella palette I actually have the brush in here still i'm gonna take the brush out this now you know cinderella had to have blues in here and i feel like i expect a cinderella palette to be all blues and whites this gave me the variety of things that i actually want to see from a disney princess palette so look at this variety y'all this cinderella palette look at this pretty green like it's so cute like this gave me the variety of shades that I wanted. I don't truly understand the purples in here. I think it's probably like a stepsister, evil stepsister kind of deal. Kindness and bibbidi bon boo bibbidi bibbidi bobbidi boo Sorry, I haven't seen the movie in 100 years. But I just thought the variety was so good. We have neutrals to make everyday pretty looks. Like some of these shimmers, like this one, are so pretty. This one is too, like more of a subtle purple, even though I'm not a purple eyeshadow person, you know? I don't know how many times I gotta say that. But like, I just think they're so pretty. The charming gold shade. I love that a lot of the mattes in here are neutrals. A lot of these shimmers are really easy to use. And then the pops of color actually have like, 
I don't know, some difference to them. Like we have a blue and then we have this dark blue to go with it. And then if you want to use this green matte, I think that goes great with any of the light shimmers in here. At least the green isn't like a standalone shimmer by itself with no matte to match it. So to me, this one just made so much sense and the quality is so good. Like I just love their shimmers. Like the mattes are good too, but the shimmers are so glide on metallic on the lid and not sparkly that it, I love love sorry didn't want to rant about that for too long but it's so pretty and then the brushes for this collection like the double-sided ones super cute i just i hope they expand to other princesses because i feel like cinderella is the most vanilla you know the most bare bones basic princess to pick give me an aurora collection okay okay <laughs> Number two was a shock, okay? I've tried this brand before. I thoroughly enjoyed their quality, but I got this in a subscription box. I got this in a BoxyCharm this month, and I was just shocked by how much I really fell in love with it, and it matched the theme of the boxes. That was my phone, sorry. But this is the Ace Beauté Falling For You eyeshadow palette. This came in a subscription box, you guys, and it's one of my favorite things. This came in the number two spot. This is so pretty. It's a fall palette. It has those warm fall leaves vibes that I think of when I think of fall. I think of the changes, but I don't just think red. It has like berry tones. It has this really dark shade in here. It has like light golds. I, just, I don't this is such a pretty composed palette. I really have fallen in love with it. I haven't touched these two berry tones, but I definitely do feel like when it's a falling for you vibe with like the leaves and stuff, I do think of like cranberry tones. So for me, this makes so much sense for a fall palette and it's so good. Like it's such good quality and I got a subscription box. So if you guys are looking, like you see this, you see me holding it, you're like, ooh, I would love that. Go on like Poshmark, go on Mercari, go on Depop. I'm sure there's people who got this in their boxy charm and didn't give it a chance. And they're selling it for super cheap. And it's really nice. Like, it's really nice. And you can get a deal, you know? Also, if you have BoxyCharm and you didn't get it in your box, you could also wait to, like, their pop-up shop and get it for, like, five bucks. It's so good. It's so good. But you don't have to pay retail price for it, you know? Anyways, lastly at the number one spot is something I did a review. And I was torn. I'm like, I haven't used this that much to give the number one spot. But it gives me a lot of fall vibes. I wish there was a yellow in it. And I think we know where we're, go we're going with this. I mean... The price is up there, but the quality is really good, and so is the packaging. So, the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Pricked Eyeshadow Palette. I have two videos on this already, and you can see my full review and swatches and everything. But I'm going to just talk about this real quick. I love the color scheme. I wish there was yellow. I wish there was a bright yellow matte. We have this kind of gold shade here, but it kind of pulls green gold. It's a little weird. I thought it was so good. There's only one shade in this palette I don't like. It's this one with the scorpion in it. But to be honest, uh, this palette's quality is really good. It's really nicely done. I think the composition of it is pretty. I do feel like the round shape, this big round purse vibe, the purse thing is cute. Makes it a little bit harder to store. And I feel like you lose a lot of shadow space by not having like a traditional rectangle palette. I feel like it's bigger than it needs to be because there's empty spaces in here. I just thought the quality of it was just so good. Like I just, I know that my look is going to be pigmented when I use this palette. And that's something I really look for with these kind of warm tones. Like I don't want a dusty warm eyeshadow look. I want like a rich warm eyeshadow look. And that's what the palette gives me. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you disagree or agree with any of my picks for these palettes, you tried them, you like them more or dislike them more than I do, let me know down below. Also, let me know something you're loving at the moment. I love hearing from you guys and like what palettes you've been using because sometimes they're not the, like the newest ones that come out or the things I haven't even heard of yet. Y'all just have like a good variety in your collection. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you later. Bye.